is 12.10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, August 22nd, 2018. And we're looking at uh, Mr. MBB's website or channel. He did a video on August 15th entitled Mysterious Rocks Washing Ashore of Lake Michigan. Eric L. chimed in talking about a tons of fresh volcanic pumice and a lot of dead fish. Well, the way he described tons of fresh volcanic pumice really interested me because growing up on the southern tip of Lake Michigan in the 60s and 70s, I used to find it all the time, but not in that abundant quantities. So I start, so I did a little research, and I started out here at the earth.nullschool.net. And in the beginning, I had it clicked on the ocean, and I went to the sea surface temperature anomalies, looking for maybe a hot spot out in the middle of the lake, possibly if it was volcanic related but what I noticed was that the temperatures around Ludington were actually cooler and there was no anomalous water temperature readings or anything like that so I decided okay I'm thinking volcano possibly so I checked the chemicals and went down to the sulfur dioxide I think the surface measurements is what they're saying and at that time what I discovered was in the center of the lake, there was a, uh, a reading of 19.99 and isolated from all the areas around it. The readings were much lower. And uh, so I didn't have much time. I didn't do much due diligence on that. So I just left it as it is. And it just looked like it was uh, coming out of the lake bed to me, dead fish, pumice, whatever. Uh, so the next day I, uh, I was monitoring it. And I saw the readings were lower, and I started uh, fielding comments, and uh, I had somebody mention about a power plant over in Ludington, south of Ludington, where it's private property, can't go there. So I looked into that a little bit. It's a power plant. I thought, well, I wonder if there's a hot water discharge, uh, you know, coming out of that power plant. Well, turns out Ludington has a pumped storage power plant. It's hydroelectric, so it's clean. You're not getting sulfur dioxide out of there. First thing I thought of was, hmm, pumped storage. Well, it costs money to pump it in there. Uh, does it, does it, uh, now is the electricity they're going to get out of it and they sell it and profit off of it? Is it going to be, you know, I don't know. There's something goofy about pumping water in and then re releasing it. It says it's got six generators at 3.6 megawatts. And if they need it, they got nine hours worth of electricity, 19,000, 19 point something megawatt hour or something. Just kind of goofy. But that's not why I'm here. So that's not the culprit. So then I got to thinking, well, what's on the other side of the lake? Well, we need to find out. I never really explored that. And it happens to be Sheboygan. And there's a power plant in Sheboygan. It's a coal burning power plant. It's right there. It's on the south side of Sheboygan. Now, I monitored the, uh, the, carbon, the, carbon, or the sulfur dioxide emissions for a couple of days. And at one point, I actually saw carbon dioxide being emitted out of the Sheboygan plant and lower temperatures or lower readings all around it. And I also saw higher readings right at the southern tip of Green Bay and lower readings all the way around it. So the power plant was definitely emitting sulfur dioxide. So I got, got interested in that a little bit. You know, how much sulfur dioxide does that plant usually emit? Because this is a 19.99 reading. So I wanted to look into that a little bit. Well, this is what I bumped into. Apparently, on uh, June 22nd, 2016, an article was written, published in the Sheboygan Press. Says they were bragging about a $250 million upgrade to Sheboygan's Edgewater Generating Station. It will improve the air quality by reducing sulfur dioxide emissions by the coal-fired power plant by 90%. Alliant Energy held a ribbon-cutting event Wednesday to mark the end of construction, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well says, under the new system, gases leaving the Unit 5 boiler are diverted to the new scrubber and bag house, which removes emissions and filters particulate matter before vending the, venting, vending, what? the exhaust through the smokestack. The bag house scrubber and scrubber system is the second major air quality improvement project built on the whatever. Okay, so I wanted to look into it a little bit deeper, see how much they're really, you know, kicking out. So I ended up over at the Edgewater Generating Station, sourcewatch.org, actually. I'm going to give you all these links. 
and I'm reading up on it and a lot of stuff I don't understand. So I clicked on the emissions data. More I couldn't understand. Now they only got it going to 2006. They show you the carbon dioxide and the sulfur dioxide. And I just don't understand it. Somebody will and I'll leave you the link. But what it does, it also shows you the death and disease attributable to fine particle pollution from Edgewater Generating Station. It's a very interesting read. Go down here. And it goes on to show you a little bit in more detail. The deaths, annual incidents. They even put a valuation on the deaths. Okay, I'm not here for that. All right. No, I'm not here for that. So I'm going to leave you all these links. And we just need to make a determination. Uh, now, on the day I saw some sulfur dioxide being emitted from uh, Sheboygan, the... Readings all around it were lower. And the wind flow patterns were off the lake. So I presumed that the lake winds were keeping that reading above Sheboygan where it belongs. Instead of isolating it over the middle of the lake. Okay. But, you know, after reading the scrub... Okay, let's see what else. I wanted to... I wanted, I'm sorry, I, mentioned, I wanted to mention something here. Uh, proposed coal retirement. They were proposed. They proposed to uh, retire these these uh, coal burning plants, uh, coal burning furnaces. But apparently they never did. All right. But I'm not so sure that that uh, anomalous. Uh, where is it at? I'm not so sure that reading came from Sheboygan Power Plant just yet. But it sure looks like it, okay? But at some point during my video, I took you over to this cutaway view of the uh, the Michigan, Michigan and Wisconsin and all this. Now, the, the herringbone pattern at the very bottom, if you follow my cursor, it kind of curves around. That is where the igneous or volcanic rock would have to originate from if it was to protrude up and end up, you know, having a, a cinder cone, you know, protrude through the lake bottom and bip and, you know, burp and spit out pumice rocks, it would have to go through, well, they say this is 14,000 feet. This is all sedimentary, sedimentary, sedimentary rocks for 14,000 feet. So lower peninsula of Michigan's sedimentary. So the volcanic cinder cone would need to actually penetrate through about 9,000 feet or more of sedimentary rock before it got to the lake bottom and where it would continue to rise. Now that's not out of the realm of possibility, okay? Now, so I'm not so sure that it was the power plant and there still may be volcanic activity out in the middle of the lake. We're talking about dead fish and all that. But uh, I also want to go back to speak to the temperature anomalies real quick. Uh, we have some cooler temperatures here, and that was kind of curious to me, and you know, for for a bit. And I had another commenter, you know, kindly inform me there was a river that uh, dumped off into the Lake Michigan there. Well, so I checked on the watershed data, USGS. And I'm gonna give you this link too, and apparently these three.